Hey team, Jordan here with Rachel and I'm, I'm interviewing Rachel. Uh, she joined in, in January and once, since she joined, she's booked uh, just under $23,000 in sales, not just through weddings, but, but high ticket boudoir as well. So yeah, um, we're gonna keep this simple. I'm just gonna ask her questions so you guys can learn from what she's been doing and, and provide you guys with a lot of value. So let's do this. So yeah, first off, Rachel, uh, let's just kind of dive in a little bit, uh, you know, uh, tell me a little bit about you know yourself as well, and tell us a little bit about you know before joining the WLMA. Uh, where did you find a lot of the issues in your business and everything as well? Sure. So I started uh, actually as a professional wedding photographer probably about eight years ago, and building my business much like I'm sure a majority of the students in your class uh, did. Um, I joined Wedding Wire. I joined the Knot. Um, and I, I've really built my brand into a very specific brand as far as Arizona goes. Um, I don't know about the rest of the United States, but we seem to kind of be flooded with a lot of fine art film photography and everything's kind of blown out and out of focus and it's gorgeous. It, it's a style, but it's not my style. Hmm. Um, mine hmm. is really more um, dramatic and editorial and I've built that brand up. Um, but finding those particular clients was really where I was struggling. So what I was doing is, you know, I was doing wedding wire, I was doing the knot. Sometimes I was paying over $600 a month, oh, uh, to be on their spotlight listing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kick myself for that pretty much every day. Um, but the main issue with that was I had no idea who I was targeting. I didn't know who these leads were. I didn't know if they were my ideal client. Huh. I had no idea where they were at in the planning process. Um, and so I just spent tons of money and tons of time trying to follow up on these cold leads and not understanding at all really the process of how you market yourself as, as a luxury brand mm. to Specific clients, so that was really my main problem that uh, you solved for me. <laughs> yeah, that's so. awesome. That's awesome as well, and and I, I love your photo as well. And that's probably really fresh because if you guys have seen her work before, she has some really beautiful work, especially on her website. And especially when you have that really luxury band and you feel like you're getting all those price shoppers, I think it's so frustrating. You know, it's like finding those people that yeah. can really value that that brand and stuff. So, and yeah, digging. I want to jump that. into. The, I know the question that a lot of students have because. You've been able to book not just weddings, but but boudoir sessions through the strategies in the WLMA as well. So um, I guess, yeah, I guess take a, a, a dive in, into, you know, what you've been able to do, that process with your ads and your nurturing and stuff on how you were able to book boudoir sessions as well. So boudoir is something that I have become very passionate about, and I, I, want, I want the other students to understand if it is something you're passionate about, and you do love creating gorgeous portraiture for women specifically, like this will work for you. Um, but your passion about it is really going to come through um, in your meetups with your clients. Mm. So I would just caution people that if boudoir is something new for you that yeah, you're not really um, familiar with yet, you might not want to jump into this type of advertising quite yet um, because you need, it there's nothing that's really more intimate as a photographer <laughs> when it comes to boudoir. Yeah. So um, I'd say when people ask me like what the key building block is, is it's specifically your passion for boudoir hmm. and your vision for creating art. So if you have that in mind, <laughs> this is how I took um, the wedding uh, lead machine generator and I took your business and your statistic knowledge and tweaked it a little bit to make it fit for boudoir. Awesome. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen with you guys. So this is the landing page, but let me show you. So this is a screenshot of um, the ad that I was, well, I'm building this one right now that I'm going to run on Facebook. Um, so you'll see that it's really similar. It, it's a model call basically, right? Like wanted. And then I tweaked it for boudoir as opposed to wedding clients. Yeah. And you'll see some of the language in here is very specific to me. <laughs> like, um, the first line on there, right. Is wanted badass ladies that are ready to create epic iconic images for their men or themselves. Like that's, that's a big part of boudoir. Um, 
as a photographer is to understand that this isn't just like an add-on for weddings. It can be. Um, a lot of my brides do book boudoir, but um, boudoir shoots can be extremely empowering for women, mm. and it's not all about mm. just creating these amazing, you know, sexy images to give to their lovers or their spouses. It's a lot about them, and so you'll see in the the wording that I use here, I'm speaking very specifically to a very specific woman. Mm. <laughs> so, um, and that's not, that's not saying like body types or even socioeconomic level, but it's a woman that has been looking to have an empowering shoot mm. either for herself or, or as a gift. Um, and you know, I use words like badass and <laughs> yeah. things like that um, because yeah. I know the woman that I'm talking to, right? Um, yeah, so, and, and then I just go on, I'm speaking directly to their fears a little bit, but also their wants, their desires. A lot of these women have been wanting to do these shoots for years, but something's holding them back. And so mm -hmm. that's what I talk to a little bit in my ad content, right? It's a new year and it's time. Uh, you've been planning on creating something like this for ages. I know because when I talk to boudoir clients, that's what they tell me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I'm, I'm making sure that I'm talking specifically to them. And then, yeah, I'm looking for, I, I say five ladies. To be honest with you guys, when I started running this, um, I, I only offered it to five, but, and I'll explain a little bit more about some of the obstacles that I ran into and why I actually offer it to all of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, um, that's another element of it. Um, yeah. And so, and I, I explain in this and then I explain very specifically in my landing page that this is for a free album, not a free session. And the reason, um, that I do that is boudoir because it is fine art and you're creating art. Yeah. Most of the women that you book are going to want some type of printed product. And mm. for me, it's the little black book that's, you know, like a little boudoir album. Most women want that. They don't just want like digital pictures to look at on the computer of themselves. They're looking to create art. So I know that's something that they want. Um, but the way that I offer boudoir photography, I can't offer free sessions yeah. and then hope to make my money on the add-on for the album. So that didn't make sense to me. Exactly. Um, so I flipped exactly. it and it's been working, it's been working pretty well. That's awesome. Um, and I, I know your lead yeah. cost, what was your lead cost as well? It wasn't it like super cheap. <laughs> I remember when you shared oh, it. Yeah, that's, I had to actually like turn off one of the ads because I was getting so many <laughs> inquiry and I could only, I could only accept like so many sessions uh, yeah. that month. So yeah, it was, it was under 20 cents. Wow. Like, that is awesome. Yeah. By the yeah, way, it, it I just want to cut you off real quick. And one thing that I, I loved and, and guys notice kind of the way that that Rachel was explaining her ad, like you can tell that you know your ideal client's pains and desires to a T. And that is why it worked. Like, you know, like the reasons why they want the session, you know, that they've been holding back. And when you pay attention, like to those pains and desires, no matter what niche you are in, that's how you get marketing and that's how you get sales to work. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that, but yeah, continue as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this would be the ad. And then um, I just say click on, you know, click to learn more below. And then, you know, I tell them when the entries have to be in by. It then takes them to my landing page, which I'll be honest with you guys, I just duplicated, I, I build my site in Wix. And so I just duplicated the landing page I have for the free engagement session and then tweaked it. So um, this is, you'll see there's big letters right at the top when a free album, hmm. <laughs> right? Because I don't want my clients thinking that the boudoir session itself is free. Hmm. What I've run into a lot is like some pretty sad stories where, I mean, I get it. Everybody's trying to book. Everybody is trying to, especially nowadays, um, you know, they're trying to get that booking. But what I, the stories I've heard from some of my clients is, they are being told that the sessions are free and then they have to pay like some exorbitant amount for each image after the shoot. I just it, don't do that <laughs> to mm. women who are looking to shoot a boudoir session. Yes, you need to walk a fine line between, you know, not giving them too much information and not just like being like, this is the prices and all of that. 
and getting them um, into a consultation with you, but be very upfront about what they're getting. Um, there's, there's nothing I think that people hate more than being surprised by costs, right? Mm. So yes, getting them in, you know, you don't want to like throw out all your pricing right away and just say, do you want this? Um, but be very open about what this is. And I, when I first ran this, that was the issue I ran into. It didn't look like this. And it wasn't so obvious that we were just getting the book for free. And so, so many of the clients that I ended up having phone consultations with were like, oh, well, I thought this was for a free session. I see. So never mind. So I needed to tweak it to make sure that they understood that. Mm, great tip. Uh, yeah. So the, just so that they understood that they're going to have to book one of my sessions. And I, at first I was only offering them one of my sessions, which is the couture session, which I'll explain. But um, now I actually give them two options and I'm finding that I'm booking a ton more. They're still booking the higher collection, but giving them the option makes them feel like they're in a little bit more control, which is very important um, in a boudoir shoot. I mean, it's important always, but especially yeah. important when you're doing boudoir. Uh, so this is the landing page that they land on to. You'll see a lot of Jordan's wording is on here, right? Like don't miss this opportunity. Um, and I have a very, this is one of the images, um, on my Instagram account that went crazy. Like people just, I mean, sex sells, let's all be honest. Yes, yes, <laughs> but, um, this is a classic boudoir image, uh, but people loved this shot. So that's something that I did too. I tried to figure out like from my, using my Instagram, what people were responding to the most mm. and using those images, um, as you know, what they see like immediately when they land on the landing page. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, more details. You'll see that I'm underlining on here, like the winners of this drawing will receive a free album add on when they book a boudoir session. Um, so that I'm trying to get it into their head that they are getting something for free. I mean, an album actually like printed, it's a cost, right? And most of us as photographers consider that um, a very expensive cost. I, I have a great company that I use for boudoir albums called Zeno, um, which I think some of your students have probably heard about, um, but very reasonable pricing. So to me, um, they feel like they're getting something that's like five times the cost of what it actually costs me to create. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a little, there's a little blurb in here about Seattle and Minnesota before Corona <laughs> became insane. <laughs> um, we were planning a bunch of different trips. I don't know if that's still happening. We're doing a, a bunch of rescheduling, but, uh, because I was traveling over the summer, I wanted to book, um, some boudoir sessions where I was traveling and I did actually, I got two in Seattle and one in uh, Minneapolis. Of course, now <laughs> we might have to all reschedule. But anyway, um, it did work that way. I, I just targeted um, differently within Facebook uh, in the demographics, demographics, yeah, um, or geography, um, and then it showed it to them. So that's what that little blurb is about. Uh, again, I'm underlining free album <laughs> and explaining, you know, how much <laughs> it usually costs. Um, I, I left in the why, right? Like all of this is stuff that Jordan has already figured out. So like why mess with it? If the, if the wording works, like, and if the giving them that type of information works, like why change it? Yeah. Just so tweak it to your brand. Is, Can I mention something as well that I, I really liked? And one thing that I, that I often have I've said is like, I like how you, to figure out what picture you were going to use, especially for your landing page, you re, you chose what was already proven. And that's often what I say when, when students are confused with what ad, picture to use for their ad. It's like, you know, you've, especially if you've been in the game for a while, you know those posts that have, people have absolutely loved. And that's already a proof of concept there on what's going to work for an ad or a landing page right. as well. So love that as well. And um, also, I'm not sure if you're getting to this, but I want to ask this as well uh, before you continue. What was the targeting you used for like Baudois as well, like as far as ads and everything? Sure. Yeah. So, um, I only targeted women. I don't do, um, doudoir yet. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not I, 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 I never <laughs> heard that saying. I like that. Yeah, I don't. And, and also, um, some boudoir photographers are, um, couples boudoir photographers. That's like mm -hmm. its own genre and it's very beautiful, but also not, not where I'm at as far yeah. as like an artist goes. So, I only target women. If you do couples boudoir photography, like more power to you do it and you can target both. You can target men and women. Um, definitely target over 20. Um, mm. I know that 
Uh, technically, you become like a legal adult at 18, but as far as I'm, I'm concerned, like I don't, I don't want to, I don't want any gray areas as far as the <laughs> age of the girls. Like I don't want them to, have, I don't want their parents to have to sign like some crazy release or whatever. So yeah. over 20, um, and I actually do up to 65. Um, that might seem a little strange, but I'll, I have shot several women um, over 55 um, for boudoir. So don't think that you're just going for like young pot chicks. <laughs> there's yeah. there's a wide range of women. Um, so that's who I focused on. And then I just did, I, I'm, in, I'm in Arizona. And so Phoenix is the major metropolitan area there. And I targeted pretty much all of Phoenix. And I think that got me up to like, 60,000 as far as a, as a, um, the potential audience. Right. Um, and then in interest, I put in boudoir mm, okay. and that's pretty, that's pretty much it. Um, turns yeah. out a lot of people are interested in boudoir. <laughs> so, <laughs> you keep things, yeah. you keep things broad with Facebook ads. It, the algorithm will do most of the work. It's pretty cool. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was super cool. Um, okay. So then, so they get all the way down here. I explain like why I'm doing it, why I want to create this for them. I keep saying the free album, free album, and then I do it again. Oh, sorry, this is boudoir, guys. So I don't know, Jordan, if you're gonna have to like. <laughs> put some, we're all we're all adults here. So um, again, like these are some images that uh, really resonated in my different social media. Um, not Instagram. Okay. Oh, so here's another thing that's interesting. When I ran it on Facebook to begin with, I used this image or one really similar to it. It almost looks like she's in um, like a swimsuit, basically like that's how Facebook sees it. Hmm. But for hmm. some reason, the next time when I ran it, I didn't change anything, same image, same text. I said, okay, like let's put it on Instagram too and not just Facebook and the ad got rejected. And I was hmm. like, what? Because I didn't change anything, but it was talking about, it, it said something like your ad is like pushing sex, basically. I'm like, well, and then I unchecked Instagram and it ran fine on Facebook. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, they're the same company, but obviously something's going on there with whatever bot is looking at the images. Like it's okay on Facebook, but it's not okay on Instagram. So just be aware of that, that there's some fine differences there that can cause you, your ad to get rejected. Uh, so I see. just be careful with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So then we come down here and, um, I list my Instagram just like I do on my free engagement page. So entering the contest. So I create, I, I do my forms on MailChimp and then I embed them into Wix. Um, and then you'll see here, there are many questions or a few questions on here that make it very clear to them that they need to spend some money on the session hmm. before they get the free book, right? And I even have like, so for this one, you know, um, where is it? Uh, how much can you invest? Um, so some of my clients are below this. It's, <clears throat> I have 1,500, 1,900. Um, I know there are some boudoir photographers in your class right now that are like freaking out because this is actually like pretty cheap yeah. <laughs> for, for what I offer. But when you think about how much I'm spending on advertising and my shooting time and the development of these albums is super, super quick. I'm making like profit between 500 and $600 a shoot. And I'm totally fine with that as far as boudoir goes because I can book those all day long. Yeah. So um, it makes sense to me. Might not to some of your students. <laughs> okay. Um, and then um, I understand that this contest is for a free album. Yes, I understand I have to book a couture session. I need to switch that because it just needs to say session because I'm offering two different ones now. Yeah. Um, or, oh, no, I thought this was for a free session. Now, what's interesting is that so they go through all this. They read my ad that says free album. They read this landing page which says album, album, album a bunch of times. They answer this question <laughs> and yet even if they say, oh no, I thought this was for a free session, if they still enter it, I still contact them and they still book. Mm. So, you know, this isn't necessarily like a weed out question. It's just me trying to educate them and educate them and educate them until I contact them so I'm not wasting my time. Exactly. That makes sense. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So, and then, um, I get to know a little bit about their different style. Uh, this also is, um, labeling me as uh, a guru in the industry, right? Like if th this question on here 
it does help me when I have a conversation with them to know like where their brain is at as far as art goes. But the fact that I'm asking them about these different types of boudoir shows that I know they're different types of boudoir, mm. <laughs> right? So it's labeling me as a, a leader and a, a knowledgeable person in the industry. So it, this, the, this is an interesting form because it does give me a lot of information, but it also imparts a lot of information. Exactly. Them. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so then they enter it, all of that goes into my MailChimp um, automated system. And then I have, I don't have as many um, educational emails that are going out to them because boudoir is not really the same as, as weddings, right? Like weddings, people are planning for a long period of time. Like you said, you know, when they're in that nurturing funnel, you're trying to have, you know, seven to 13 different touches with them. I find that with boudoir, if they enter this and they're ready, like they need to hear from me probably, I think I have four or five um, yeah. in my email nurturing and it's every day. Um, and then I end up, you know, contacting them and they, the, the emails that I've sent them are establishing me as, you know, the leader in the industry, like the person they want to have this session with. Um, but it happens a lot faster than um, the engagement session wedding planning. Just because it's it's a different type. They're ready. Of they're ready to buy now. Uh, with the yeah. way that you have your ad set up, your landing page set up, if they're submitting, they're basically ready to buy now. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So so they will get a couple um, emails from me, and then I I run it for the thirty days. Like I I do that, but I usually get most of them um, within those first ten. And so sometimes I'll announce it early. Um, but I the last one that I did, I think I had. I mean, 80, 80 or up to a hundred entrants wow, into it. That's freaking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was great. I mean, it was amazing. Um, now, so then what I'll do is I usually set up, um, a FaceTime with them. I find or FaceTime or, uh, you know, Google Hangouts or something zoom. Also, I don't do um, a whole lot of screen sharing with them when I have the consultation to tell them, Hey, you won the album. And then I just say, here are your two options. Hmm. Now, my two options, originally, I was only offering couture sessions. And yeah. what I mean by couture is um, we are shooting at a luxury resort, like up in Scottsdale or Paradise Valley. That's a swanky part of Arizona. Um, so I'm booking a room for them. I have a professional hair and makeup artist come to the room to get them all glammed up. Um, and then the difference between that high, higher collection and the lower one, I do more images for them. I, I do between like 40 and 60, mm -hmm. whereas my lower collection, I think I do, I don't know, between like 30 and 40 or something. I have found that that's not a major deciding factor for most women. Um, it's the experience, right? So yeah. the other option that I'm offering them is I can't, I will come to their home um, to do a classic couture session. So if they I don't want to pay the extra for the booking of the room, if they want to do their own hair and makeup, um, that's a that's a different cost. Um, and so, you know, I bring that down. But most women pick the couture session because it's the experience that they want to book and the difference between the price is not that much. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's what most of them have been booking. But oh, giving them the option makes more people book <laughs> yeah if that makes sense right because some of the women that i contacted my first round um and i said well this is the couture session like you have to book the couture session they were like rachel that's a mortgage payment and i'm like <laughs> yeah <it is." laughs> i mean you know because I'm, I'm booking the hotel room the hair and makeup all of this stuff um so i realized i needed to be a little bit more flexible for some women but also like, you know, when um, when you were explaining in the course that you, you give them options and then they end up picking the one that you want them to pick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So you, if you build it that way and you give them a couple options, um, they feel like they're in a little bit more of control. Um, and I, I just find that they're they're more open to booking. That's that awesome. Way. This is such good value. Honestly, like if, especially if you, if guys, if, if you don't even do like Beaudoir and even if you're just trying to get like more family or, or seniors or something like this will work. Mm -hmm. I can 100% see that this is going to work and oh, this is awesome. Love this as well. And, and also as, as far as like, you know, um, so let's say the people who maybe didn't 
when like that album or also people from your your monocle for for engagement sessions and stuff as well have you been mm-hmm. nurturing those leads who maybe you didn't have that session with as well sure so i the for the boudoir i have been like offering everybody so yeah. there aren't really like no non-winners for that um again the coronavirus has kind of like gotten a little crazy uh yeah. so everything's being pushed to may i have no idea how i'm gonna shoot all of those sessions in may but <laughs> um so but for the engagement sessions i have found um so for my winners, I, and I don't know if you guys are finding this, but I'll email them out. I've tried it two different ways. I've tried it through MailChimp, and I've also tried it through Wix because Wix has an like an automated email thing that you can do. Um, almost every single email that I've sent to my winners has gone into their trash. They're very few for some reason. Like mm. I, I think because if I do it on Wix, it. It, their inbox reads it as different from because they're getting my nurturing emails. They're yeah. getting all those. Um, but anyway, so uh, a text message I think is really, really good. Um, I reach out to because they they give you that information in Mailchimp. So I reach out to them via text um, to set up for my winners. I see. My non winners get an email from me, um, and the title of it is "I know losing sucks, but this doesn't." <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten a pretty good click rate on it. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so then I explained to them that, um, you know, I, I know that it sucks not to win, but I'm still going to offer them the free engagement session if they book one of my wedding collections. Wow. And then I put the link on there that we can, you know, talk um, through Calendly. I use that as well. Um, and I have, I booked, um, I booked one wedding through non-winner last month. And um, yeah, she, she set it up. And I will probably get to this later, but the album viewing for me has been the game changer. Yes, um, that's my favorite part. <laughs> it is. It is. And I, all, for all of the reasons that you say, Jordan, like you need them emotionally invested, hmm. all of that. But my albums are something that I am super, super passionate about. And they look very, very different. Um, yeah. And I... I have it and I should show it to you guys and maybe I will, maybe I'll get up and like, (laughs) um, I use a company called Couture book and I custom design all of my own albums and they are unbelievable. And I can't tell you guys when I can get the album in front of my clients and I can show them the beauty of the art that goes into it. They always book it. They always do. And they always book the collection that has the album in it because that's what pulled them in to begin with. That's awesome. And it's an amazing thing. Like it's it's not even, I know everyone kind of raves about like incentive based pricing, but it's almost not even so much about that. Yes, that helps. But it's like one, when they jump in that album being one, you're taking through, through like that process where they can emotionally connect to your work. They build that clarity. They connect to your work. And two, you know, if, if you, if you do it right and you're comfortable with it, like they get to know you and they just fall in love with you. You know what I mean? Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> and that's, once that happens, that exactly happens, they're emotionally connected to your work. They fall in love with you. And then you have the incentive-based pricing and stuff as well. It's like, it's a, it's a no-brainer right. for them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yep. That's oh, no. what I found. <laughs> so now also, this is a common question um, that students often have. So I want to uh, bring this up as well. So I guess as far as nurturing content, you know, when, maybe when it comes to weddings, maybe it comes for Baudois. <laughs> I mean, what is the type of content that you put out there to, to nurture your leads? Yeah, let me show you guys some screenshots here again, if I can move this. Okay, so this is my process within, um, within MailChimp. So it's all automated. Um, and, you know, the first few are just what you said, right? Like the, the gifts and explaining to them what they're going to get. And then the first one, that I did here um, was what to wear. You put yourself into the mind of your client, right? And Jordan, you say that uh, to the students all the time. Um, But if someone's about to have a luxury photo shoot, they want to know what to wear. (laughs) Like hands down, they want to know what to wear. I find it. And the, the open rate is pretty good for that for me. Um, So I, that's my first one, um, what to wear. I talk about that and um, if you're, if you're not like huge into fashion and crazy, like I am, um, something that you can talk about is uh, rent the runway. I find that, uh, that has been really popular with my brides rent the runway. If, if 
I'm not trying to stereotype, but for my guy photographers out there, if you're, yeah. if you're not like aware of all these fashion things, um, <laughs> your brides can go and they can rent a dress like a Bagley Mishka or, ah, cool. uh, you know, like some very fancy gown that would cost $1,800 and they get to rent it for a couple hundred bucks. That's been real popular for me um, for my engagement sessions, specifically awesome for my idea. for my type of bride. Um, so there you go. And I also explain like, you know, how to stay in the same color palette, things like that. So you know, if fashion is not your, um, you know, like main focus, if you don't know a lot about that, um, think about other things, posing. I have that in here as well. Um, you need to give your clients information that they actually want, right? Mm. Which Jordan, you say all the time, right? You don't want to like spam them with a bunch of stuff that they don't need to know about. Um, so then I've got, uh, where to have your engagement session. That's kind of specific for Arizona. Um, how much time I feel like this was kind of a self-indulgent email that I sent, (laughs) but I find that people were interested in it. Um, because I get asked all the time, like eight hours of coverage, like that seems insane. 10 hours of coverage. It does seem insane. And so you understand how I shoot and why I front load my coverage and what I do during the quote unquote getting ready time. Um, so that one's really helpful because that's something that a lot of clients are totally clueless about when it comes to booking, you know, a photographer. So that one's, um, I found has had a pretty good click rate. Um, natural versus effortless is also something that's very specific to my style. So I've peppered in here, um, you know, they have questions, they, they need this knowledge from me. So I'm becoming an expert in the field as I share it. But some of this is also explaining to them the type of photographer that I am. And I find that that's really important because for me, uh, because I have a very specific style, um, I need to kind of weed some people out, right? Yeah. Um, because if, you know, if photojournalism is what they're looking for, they just really want like those candid shots. If that's the most important thing to them, I'm probably not the photographer for them mm. <laughs> because I spend a ton of time on portraiture and creating really dramatic editorial images. Yeah. And so this is something, um, it's an educational one, but it's a little, it's a little artsy. It's a little on the photographer side, which I know we're not supposed to, hit them with a bunch of like lighting and like explanations of tech stuff. But this explains why I am the type of photographer and artist that I am. Yeah. So and I, I think that's I, okay. I, if, if you can make it so they do relate to it, like we're just word and angle things. So they, they get it and they relate to it. Right. 100% okay. Yeah. And that's, that's what that one is natural versus effortless. I hear brides all the time telling me, well, I want to look natural. And we're mm. like, no, you don't. You want to look effortless but you want it to make sense. You can take Uh, a picture of a bride sitting on a couch eating Cheetos, waiting to go down the aisle. You can do that. That's very natural. That's a natural (laughs) situation. But wouldn't it make more sense to tell the epic dramatic story if she's standing in a doorway with some gorgeous backlight and you have highlights on all of her bridesmaids that now look like they're maids in waiting, right? Like that is effortless looking, but it's not natural. And so yeah. that's something that I, I spend a lot of time talking to my brides about. So I figure what my mind I like the way you worded that. <laughs> I can it. tell you're really good at the album viewings too. <laughs> Just the way you you're, talk you're, you're, you're talking about that. I, I love that. No, I love how you word that as well. I do. I do. My, my album viewings go a little longer than they probably should, but they book. <laughs> so that's the important part. Um, okay. So then hire a pro that's, um, more about like, if you're looking at your budget, like where are the areas that you really need a wedding professional in? I'm a huge proponent of having a wedding planner, so I push that a lot. Um, I explain some horror stories of what's gone wrong when you don't have a competent DJ. You wouldn't think that a DJ can ruin your day, so but you can, right? So that, that's like talking about you know their insecurities or their fears. Um, okay, uh, and then a couple of these. Um, I do inspo flashes because I've done a lot of styled shoots um, in my career, uh, talking about different styles and things. That's down here in nine. That's just them getting to know me and my style a little bit more. 
um, areas to watch for photo issues on. And for me, I'm tagging those with CTA. That means like a call to action. That's where I've added in there, hey, like I only have so many openings left, you know, asking them. Um, so you'll notice I don't do it with every email. Yeah. Um, but I do I do um, sprinkle those in there towards the end. And yeah, so I have like seven, I have 17 <laughs> nurturing emails here. Um, let's see what else. Uh, venue spotlight. So I'm a preferred vendor um, at a lot of the resorts around here in Scottsdale. And so I've done, um, you know, people want to know, like, where where am I going to get married if I want to get married in Scottsdale or if I want to get married in Sedona? Um, so some of those are venue spotlights to show them some options. Um, planning a destination wedding. I pulled that one in from um, Wedding Wire, like you told me to, because I, <laughs> I was like, what's this next one going to be? Um, <laughs> and so I pulled some information from there. Uh, family drama, I find is an interesting one. You'll see mm. it starts to drop down a little and then I get back up to 18% here <laughs> because, yeah. uh, managing family issues, you know, um, divorced parents, uh, step parents, different things like that and how to manage that people are really interested in. So again, yeah. giving them information that they want. Um, a couple more spotlights for venues, finding the perfect gown, talking about some fashion, more uh, makeup mistakes. No bride wants to have their makeup jacked on the day of the wedding. <laughs> so that's one. And then my most recent one is uh, Love in the Time of Corona. I don't know if you guys have read the book Love in the Time of Cholera by Isabel Allende. <laughs> but I was, you know, a lot of my clients are, are so stressed about what's going on right now. And so I just wanted to alleviate some of their fears a little bit. Mm. And I, I think our industry is probably going to be changing a bit, um, especially in the next several months, especially in 2020. So just talking to them about um, focusing on them and their love story. That's what the wedding's about. The party's yes. awesome. All the extra stuff is awesome. But I actually just shot a wedding March 27th. Um, which was a little rough. Uh, they were supposed to have 120 people at it. Um, she decided to still have it. Arizona hadn't gone on to lockdown yet, um, and only 10 people showed up. And she was, you know, she was emotional about it. And this is a bride that I've been working with um, for, you know, over a year. Yeah. And I just changed their mentality. I was like, mm. let's not think about the fact of what's not going to happen, but let's think about this as a luxurious elopement. Right. It's just about the two of you. And now we don't have to worry about all these groomsmen and bridesmaids that decide not to show up. Yeah. Now I have time with you to create epic couples imagery, which is what we wanted to do anyway. Exactly. And it turned out really, really gorgeously. And so I wanted to write a nurturing email to everybody. Um, no one has gotten to it yet in my queue. Um, but that, that was my last one. Yeah. And that's beautiful, too. And I, I love how you kind of took the reins to be like the high value leader in that situation. And this is something that's really powerful too, is not even becoming that leader like on the wedding day. And But if, if guys, like if you can show that you're that high value leader in your nurturing content, in your groups, in your emails, all that kind of stuff, people will gravitate towards you. If you have good work, you build that personal brand and they see you as that authority, people will just gravitate towards you. So I love that. And so uh, this question I really want to hit over here as well. So um, often soon that questions have is I guess, how have you, I guess you kind of, we kind of tapped in this a little bit, but we can hit it briefly. <clears throat> how have you handled, I guess, you know, conversations and inquiries through like winners and, and non-winners and what are some best pieces of advice you have for students about the album viewing consultations? Yeah. So we did talk about it a little bit. Like I, I'm going to, I'm going to do it, Jordan. Hold on. I'm going to show you guys this album. <laughs> Hold on this yeah, time. no problem. <laughs> so I have it, I have it in digital format too. Um, but this is one. can you guys see it? This is one of my couture oh, albums. Uh, actually, uh, get rid of the screen share. Oh, let's see. Okay. Let's stop that. How do I do that? Um, bottom of the right. I guess. There we go. Okay. Can you guys see me now? Yeah. Okay. So this is one of my couture albums. Nice. And as you can see, like this, it almost looks like a little gift box <laughs> that I've created for them. And it's like, it's got these three amazing, um, like folders to it. So you can see like it opens, right? Okay. Oh, right. So this is a couture book and 
getting people to see that my specific clients when I show them that that's like a double exposure on top of a custom created background for them it's done (laughs) (laughs) you know and walking them through it I get to have um, a conversation about how I shoot what I think is important um why I don't shoot with a lot of second shooters like I get to talk to them Mm. and make that emotional connection with them Um, But if I wasn't able to show them this album, there's no way that I could explain that this is an heirloom and not just like your mom's like big, thick, you know, wedding album that you let, you know, cover dust. So um, it's just it's so important. (laughs) I don't know how how I can make it uh, any any more highlighted. Um, When they see it in that tangible form. Mm-hmm. And so this is a little story, little tangent, of course, because yeah. you're talking to me. So <laughs> um, I had, and I think I told you this, Jordan, but I had a couple that I had been in my, well, I'd been chasing them for like six months. They were a lead that came to me through a wedding planner and they really loved my work, but their budget was around 2000, right? Like everybody says. Um, and they they still hadn't made a decision. Their wedding was supposed to be in April, and so they wanted to talk with me. Rather than doing what I had always done in the past, which is just send you know links to my pricing and stuff, yeah. I was like, well, let's get into an album viewing. Let's do this so I can show you. So I showed them. Well, it turns out he's an artist too. Mm. He's um, a video producer guy, um, and I got to talk to the bride about how I make women feel comfortable in front of the lens. And she ended up crying halfway through it. I mean, it was, it was a very, there was a lot of emotion going on and showing him that album. They end up booking me. Now, fast forward, I go to do my venue scout. I'm talking to the coordinator there and she's like, I have to ask you, how did you book Jamal and Carrie, which are, which are their (laughs) names? And I was like, Oh, well, and I explained to her that I did the album viewing and she goes, man, like you have this figured out because I was the eighth photographer that they had been talking to and she knows a lot of these photographers and most of them dropped their prices down. Mm. They dropped them down to 1500 to try to book them. And I, they ended up booking a package for me that was a little over four, four grand. Yes. Right. Because of that emotional connection that you make and making them understand why they're booking you. So (laughs) if anyone was questioning whether or not these album viewings are worth it and worth the time and worth the energy, a thousand percent. Yes. Connection. That's everything. Because the thing is, people, people like people often be like, oh, photography is so expensive. It's because they don't have a connection to you. They don't have a connection to your work. But if you can get, oh man, I I feel so powerful. So strongly about this. If you can connect them emotion to your work and to you, it's game over for a lot of couples. If that's something they really do value deep inside, they may not know it though. They really may not right. know it at that time. That is, that's such a good story too. Remember that. Everyone. It's true. It really happened. <laughs> so no. final, I got to uh, close this off soon, but final question. So what is, what is one piece of advice that you have for, for students in the program as well? Okay. A piece of advice is this, like, and I, I know other students have said it too. I know you're skeptical. I was skeptical too, um, because I had tried Facebook ads before and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so I just like threw money at it and, you know, see what I, um, but keep in mind that stats are stats, math is math <laughs> and the results are there and try to remember the broadness of that funnel, because that's something that I got a little tripped up in. I, with Facebook, you can get so specific, right? You like, you can pick like, Oh, I want people that only are in the top 10% and I only wanted da, 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 da. And Jordan, you mentioned in an email or in one of your videos, like think about it. Like what if, you know, Apple or some of these luxury brands got so super targeted that then they wouldn't have that brand awareness. Hmm. And so I would just say, keep in mind, that even if uh, those people that you see coming into your funnel, you're not finding your, your ideal isn't in there yet. You your brand is being exposed to so many more people, and so with the more people <laughs> that you are exposed to, you're going to find those ideal clients. Yes. If they are going yeah. to be in there. You're going to find them. Um, it, it's just the stats are the stats. The math is the math. The results are there. <laughs> so yes, it's it's a lot of work. Um, and it's 
uh, it, it is a lot on the back end, and I, I've heard other students say this, so I don't. I guess I don't need to repeat it. But it is a lot of work, but the results are there, and these are proven practices. Hmm. Um, the album viewing was not super easy for me. Like when I first started, I am not in sales. My husband's in mm-hmm. sales. <laughs> he listens to me sometimes, and it, like, oh god, like I, it is. It's hard. But the more you do it, and if you are actually passionate about your work and mm. what you're showing them, then it won't feel so salesy. Yes. It won't feel like you're, you know, trying to, you know, trick them into spending more money than they want. It's not about that. It's about explaining to them why you are worth it. Yes. And if you feel that way about your art, that will come through to your clients. That's so another little advice trick uh, that I wanted to make sure that people knew. Um, and I wrote about it in our Facebook group a little bit is that, you know, yes, we're giving away free engagement sessions, but that doesn't have to feel cheap. Mm. <laughs> now, when my clients ask me, cause I have had a few of them like, is this really, is this really free? Like you trying to sell me a timeshare. I've, I've had, now, now I enter that into my little script because it's so funny and yeah. make them laugh. Um, but it, you know, I tell them I'm doing it to give back, which I am. Like yes. I am doing this to give back. I am doing it to meet more clients. They don't have to know that this is my main, you know, marketing that I'm doing. That's not the brand that I want to present. Well, I want to present that I am a high-end luxury photographer that is giving back to her community. Mm. You know, so I, if you change your mentality the way your clients read you will change too. That's a, you're that's you're in control of that perceived value of of your brand, really. Let's like you know, it's a model call, you know. But once they're in that funnel, you're in control of how they perceive things after that, and that's exactly. amazing. And I think that's really really awesome advice. And um and one thing that you kind of mentioned is with that funnel, you know, it is it's a as you as long as you remember, it is a low conversion, high ROI strategy. So obviously we're generating hundreds of, of leads. We're not going to book 100 weddings, but we're no. getting so much attention to get those ideal clients. <laughs> but this exactly. is this was seriously so good from the from the how you do the boudoir to like all the stuff we do with your weddings. I know students are going to get value with this. So uh, final questions now: Where can student where can uh, students find you? Uh, so I'm on Instagram, um, R as in Rachel, and then Leintz, my crazy, ridiculous uh, German name, L-E-I-N-T-Z, photography. Um, so that's on Instagram. Uh, my website is the same, rlinesphotography.com, um, and also Rachel Lines Photography on Facebook. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Rachel. This was amazing. Absolutely. Anytime, Jordan. It was great chatting with you.